Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome to the first episode of Heel Hook Ho. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, hold on. I forgot to turn off the fan. Okay, welcome to the first episode. Today we're going to be looking at this climb I was working on. So my gym uses a color tag grading system, and this is a blue tag, which means it's anywhere from a V4 to V6. Um, I'm just going to say this isn't a V6 because there were definitely many harder blue tags. This is one of the easier ones, although I wouldn't say it's easy. It's just doable. I had actually tried this climb earlier, but I didn't see that it had a secondhand start on the right because the second hold is covered kind of by this orange tag here and it's also under the volume so you don't really see it when you're like standing up over the climb a lot of people walked up to this and tried to put both hands on the hold and then just like walked away once they weren't able to start including myself so once i saw that it had a second hand start i tried it again and i was able to do the first move but i kind of get stuck going for this pocket here so i'll let you see this attempt right here this is probably my like third or fourth attempt after seeing the second hand start Okay, so as you guys can see, I just hesitated on this foot swap for too long and I just spent way too much time in that position, so I ended up falling off. But the foot chip is totally fine and all the holds on this climb are good aside from this one foot chip on the volume. Everything else is fine. I just really didn't want to mess up since this was the farthest I had gotten and I really wanted to just send and finish the climb. So that's why I took long on this, but the foot chip is totally fine. So the other move that I was really struggling with was this right hand cross over to this pocket. Both of those pocket holds are just as good as they look, they're very deep, but the cross itself was a little bit hard for me and as you saw in the first attempt, I ended up cutting feet even though I was able to catch it. It felt uncomfortable because in order to actually reach for the pocket, I either had to pull myself in with my left hand on this pinch or I would have to like sink really low, but then my hips would be far from the wall since my feet are on these holds. So I do figure out a better way of doing it. But before I show you guys that, I wanna show you a climb I did almost exactly two months earlier that really helped me figure out this move. So this is a red tag, which is one color below blue, and a red tag is anywhere from V2 to V4. I was hosting my friend Julian at the time, and he tried this pink climb out and got stuck in this position right here. And I tried the move by itself and figured it out, but when I tried to do it from the beginning, I just wasn't able to do it for some reason. But as you can see here, I kind of struggle to get to this caterpillar looking hold. Uh, I think the intended beta is to just do a right hand cross. Uh, there are other ways of doing it. We saw one girl grab the nub with her left hand and then match her right hand on top and then move her left hand from under her right hand to grab the caterpillar looking hold. So that was crazy, but that didn't work for me. and. I eventually figured out what I was doing. You can see when I just try the move by itself, I'm able to do it pretty easily. And when I looked back at the footage, I realized that my left foot was just kind of hanging down and kind of touching the wall. And in this next attempt, you're gonna see that I purposely do that and like push the top of my foot against the wall. And this does two things. One is that it lets me lower my body so I can keep my left arm relatively straight when I go for the cross. And it also gives me another point of contact and stops me from kind of barn dooring off since my foot is pressing up against the wall and like stopping me from turning. If I put my left foot on this hold, then I kind of have to lock off with my left arm in order to stay close to the wall and go for the cross. But sinking my foot down lets me stay close to the wall and that made it way easier. And as you can see, it just looks way smoother here. So the rest of the climb was pretty straightforward and I was able to send it after this. So I thought about this red tag that I did while I was doing the blue tag and I thought I should try to apply the same kind of concept. So instead of putting my foot on this foothold, you're gonna see that I kind of sink my foot down. And what this allows me to do is sink into the pinch more and keep my arm straighter when I go for the cross. And it also, once again, gives me just another point of contact. But mostly it just lets me sink low so I don't have to lock off 
my left arm because it just feels like a really awkward position when I do that on the pinch. And as you can see, I'm able to do the move not super clean because I still end up cutting feet, but it felt way easier and it was really surprising how just putting my foot down instead of on the holds made such a huge difference. So I was pretty confident I could do this move consistently at this point and here's my first attempt after having figured this out. Okay, so what ended up happening in this attempt was that I had too much weight on my left foot on this chip over here, and I need to get weight on my right foot in order to reach for the finish hold. And you're gonna see that I keep making the same mistake of just not getting my weight over my right foot. In this next attempt, I kind of just try to throw for the finish hold and brute force it, but that doesn't work. Uh, I really should get my weight over my right. And the guy I was climbing with this day uh, also kept telling me that, but Intuitively, I just looked at these holds right here, and since they're kind of like diagonal side pull kind of holds, I just naturally thought I was supposed to sink down into them, but that's not really going to work here because I eventually do have to reach with one of my hands to get to the finish, so these holds should just be used kind of to stabilize me, and my weight should really be over my feet, but I just kept forgetting to do that, and it took several attempts for me to finally try doing that. This was near the end of my session as well, so I was tired and I was kind of rushing it because I really just wanted to send this climb. And uh, as you can see, I fall a couple times trying to rush through it. I wasn't making sure my foot was solid on this kind of small foot chip before I made the next move. And yeah, I just wasn't being really careful. In this attempt right here, I do this weird cross and I, I have no idea why I did this. It wasn't planned or anything. I don't, I just don't even know why I went for this but as you can see I kind of just fall kind of too low and there was no going back here I wasn't going to be able to pull myself up so that was a weird kind of attempt but anyways I made the same mistake over and over and I finally realized I just need to focus on getting my weight over my right foot that's all I had to do so in this last attempt of the day all I was thinking was rock my weight over my right foot once I get to the end and I can send it I also knew that the final hold was good since a couple guys who had climbed this had told me that, so I just needed to get to it and I'd be able to finish. And yeah, I slip off early again. And flapper warning in three, two, one. Yeah, so that marks the end of the session for that day. But I felt really confident and this is the farthest I had gotten on this climb, so I was sure I could send as long as I got that last move down. Everything else I was getting pretty consistent at, even though I showed myself falling a couple times. I knew what to do and I came back two days later and this was my first attempt of the day. By the way, you guys are going to see this keychain carabiner thing on my jeans. My sister was doing product photography for this and she wanted to get me wearing it in action so that's why I'm wearing it in my climbing session. If you guys want to pick one up I'll leave a link in the description and I actually got one myself so yeah that's why I'm wearing it during my climbing session but I normally don't wear keys while I'm on the boulder so don't get mad at me. Anyways I'm gonna let you guys see my first attempt of this session and y'all at this moment, a bouldering babe appeared from the shadows and started watching from across the gym. So you already know I had to activate my final form.
Oh, it's all good. <laughs> we ended up sending. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, so this was a satisfying one because the initial hard move was the cross to the pocket and that just immediately felt way easier after thinking back to the red tag I did a couple months earlier. So that was just really cool that that move all of a sudden became very easy for me and consistent uh, just because I was able to think back to a previous climb, which I think is a really cool part about climbing. You end up running into the same kind of situation multiple times and you learn to recognize it more quickly. And this attempt right here was me trying to do this climb more cleanly, but I ended up kind of just doing it with the same quality. I thought I'd be able to do it like faster or something, but it's kind of the same. But before we finish this episode, I want to show you guys another blue tag that I did on the same day that I finally sent this one. And it's cool because this kind of involves another right hand cross, which I needed to kind of like flag my foot out in order to do. So this is my second attempt of this boulder. And to be fair, I was with a group of other guys who I had met in the climbing gym and we were all working on this. So I kind of got to see their beta and I, I'm pretty sure someone sent it like right before me. So I got to see kind of what they were doing. But this was the quickest I had ever figured out a blue tag, but it was still a very satisfying climb. So this is where I initially got stuck. I didn't know how to get my foot onto this hold right here. And in this attempt, I figured out that I just got to get my hands higher. You kind of hear me saying it. I gotta get my hand up first. And eventually I grab this volume and that allows me to get my foot up. Nice. Oh, nice. And from here, I eventually have to reach for this pocket over here. And I've never really felt like my height has been an issue in climbing, like pretty much ever. I'm 5'6", which is like shorter than average, but I'm not like super short. So I've never felt like there's been some kind of really long reach or anything. But this was one of the few exceptions. And you're going to see that I have to kind of post my foot on the wall in order to reach this pocket. Once I get to here, this is the move I'm talking about. I have to do a right hand cross over to this hold here and it's a good hold but I don't really want to lock off with the hand that's in the pocket so I ended up sinking low and then flagging out and as we progressively have gone through each climb it becomes more of like a normal nice. flag. On the red tag it was more of just me sinking my foot down so I could get my body lower and then also pressing against the wall and then in the earlier climb I was showing uh, it was more of just like sinking into the pinch by flagging my leg out and then here it's straight up just a flag and then I'm like posted up on the volume but I still thought it was cool because it just felt like a similar position and it's just cool that each climb kind of helps me figure out the other and the movement itself with the right hand cross felt very similar as well so thought that was really cool and at this point I was able to send the climb very happy to have gotten these two blue tags down and that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And honestly, this boulder wasn't even one of the more interesting blue tags that I've done. I definitely have some more cool ones to show, but I wanted to show this one just because the right hand cross, which was initially the hardest move for me, became easy just because I was able to think back to a previous climb. And then right after that, I do a climb where I'm in kind of a similar position. And you guys will see in later videos that there are a couple other boulders where this also comes into play. and. Yeah, there's, there's more context, but that's why I wanted to show this one. And there are definitely some more videos on the way. So make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.